will never stop traveling. You should travel too. Travel promotes self-growth, it builds bridges of understanding, and it humbles the soul. Would you like to be the best person you can be? Who wouldn't? Life is a story. Travel adds to your story. How would you also like to better understand others? Collectivism elevates everyone. By truly understanding and helping others, you also help yourself. So, travel then is a win-win for you, for me, and for all of us. Let's define travel. Travel does not need to be far. Only about 6% of the world's population will ever, even once, step foot on an airplane. Travel is simply a journey outside of one's comfort zone. When it becomes about the experience, and less about the distance or the destination, it is accessible to all. Travel down the road and clip in at a climbing gym for the first time. Take a karate class. Go back to school. Have a new experience in your own home by cooking something far out of your comfort zone. Be uncomfortable. And I promise, the more you do, the less uncomfortable each experience will become. Best part, the benefits will continue to mount. A short backpacking stint in South Korea is a great example of a concrete time when I grew personally through travel. It's ironic that I worked at a seafood restaurant at the time because I despised everything fish. I understood, however, that a main part of the Korean diet was seafood. So I packed plenty of granola bars and trail mix to stay energized yet fish free. I was young and a bit naive. A few days in, I was famished. I did my version of the chicken dance to restaurant owners and locals desperately trying to find something to eat that did not come from the, the sea. No luck. So. Fish it was. And what arrived at my table was a beautifully presented whole fish, complete with scales, bones, and eyeballs. Eating that dish was incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> it still makes me laugh. So uncomfortable for me. Yet, hunger makes us do outrageous things, and I dug in. And you know what? I did not hate it. And I didn't just like it, I loved it. A week later, no joke, in Japan, I was eating sushi, and I've never looked back. Travel helped my palate expand and grow. It helped me grow. When you take on experiences that are new and different, you change yourself for the better forever. Travel has also shown me how others see the world. Truly understanding the different customs, traditions, and ideas of others is powerful. This acceptance does not imply mutual agreement. But with genuine interaction comes respect. And different becomes just that, different and not wrong. There's one particular time abroad where I remember having this light bulb moment of understanding. I was in Calcutta, India, walking down the main road in the Caligat neighborhood at dawn. This neighborhood is known for being home to Mother Teresa's home for the destitute and dying as well as home to one of Asia's largest Hindu temples, the Kaligat Kali Temple. At this time in my life, I felt confident teaching the ideas of reincarnation to my high school students. 
But I honestly struggled every time we talked about it to really get it. I really did not understand the belief in multiple lives. Until this day, as I continued walking down the street, this one woman captivated me. It was about 5 a.m. It was already hot and humid. She was stooped on somewhat of a curb, and she was rubbing her eyes and kind of shaking herself back and forth in an effort to wake herself up for the day. The air was already thick with the smells of masala and incense and garbage and urine. At this woman's feet were several large puddles that were filled with rain from the night before, as well as, I'm sure, the contents of the open sewers that also ran down the side of the road. I was drawn to this woman. Also at her feet was a small, young, naked, sleeping child whose limbs were dangling in these puddles. I ached for them. I understood the inequities of Indian society. I understood that no matter how well-intentioned, hardworking, capable this woman was, there was very little to no chance that her life would ever improve, that the life of her child would ever improve. I desperately fought the thoughts that were echoing in my head. What reason did this woman have to wake up that morning? What reason did she have to wake up the next morning or any morning? What reason did this woman have to live? I was ashamed of these questions and these thoughts, and, and I remember hanging my head, desperately trying to shake it and, and move on from this picture. And as I picked up my head, bam, there it was. There was my answer. That temple is what that woman saw every morning when she woke up. And it was a concrete reminder to her and many others like this in this neighborhood that was destitute, that if she kept persevering, if she didn't give up, no matter what that day threw at her, that she would be rewarded, that she could improve her life in the next life. Reincarnation gave this woman hope in a society that did not. A belief in reincarnation kept this woman alive. And in that moment, I got it. Now, I did not myself adopt a belief in reincarnation, but I now truly understood how important that was for this woman and many others around the world. I saw, I listened, I reflected, I understood. Powerful lessons come about yourself and others when you take on new experiences. Perhaps, however, the most valuable part of travel is not in what is gained. Let me show you. We all live in a bubble of sorts. Bubbles do not imply privilege, nor are they a negative thing. They're simply the everyday worlds in which we live. Let's say this is my bubble. My bubble is small. Most weekdays, like today, my bubble encapsulates my home, my neighborhood, the bus stop, a short drive to my children's preschool, an even shorter continued commute to my work, and the same destinations in reverse. I like this small world. I'm lucky enough that I choose to live here. And for the most part, I choose who I share this world with. It's comfortable. 
it's familiar. It's oftentimes predictable until I take on one of these experiences. And then, whoa, all of a sudden, that bubble gets a little bit bigger. And everything that used to be completely unknown starts to come into focus a little bit. These new experiences not only help me grow and help me understand others, but it fuels my desire to have more new and different experiences. And my world continues to expand. All of these experiences in this expanding world are incredibly valuable. But I think the most valuable piece is the realization that no matter how many new experiences you're able to have, there's far more that you will never know, that you will never understand. Travel, near and far, shows us that the more we know, the more we do not know. Chew on that for a few more seconds. The more you know, the more you do not know. It's humbling. And at the core of pluralism, it's scary. Because as your world expands and the unknown expands, your own significance seems to diminish. This feeling, however, is not binary. Because remember, collectivism elevates everyone. It motivates us to ask questions like, what else is out there? How might someone else think of this situation differently? How could I approach this differently? It motivates us to see more, to taste more, to experience more, to exchange more. It motivates us to understand more. So I encourage you to ask yourselves, when is the last time you've ventured outside of your comfort bubble? When is the last time you have felt uncomfortable? How can you push yourself a little bit further? Be uncomfortable. Because if we could all push ourselves just a little bit further, just a little bit more often, imagine collectively what we could accomplish and what a beautiful journey that would be. Thank you.